G'day, Dylan O'Donnell from the Byron Bay Observatory here. I don't normally like to talk about the weather, but the weather has been the worst on historical record. I have a house that went underwater. The tenants were homeless for four days. They went camping on the beach. But don't worry about me, everything with us is fine. Look, there's not much else to say, but I really just want to get back to normal life. I really would like a day without COVID, without lockdowns, without intense storms. I just want to get back to my job and I want to take photos of space. So in an effort to get back to normality, I will be checking out the new Skywatcher Evo Lux telescope. Uh, now this is a telescope Skywatcher sent to me to have a play with. It's not mine, I'm not gonna keep it, it's not free. Uh, they're not paying me to say anything, so I'm just gonna see what I can do with it. I have a funny idea, which you probably already know because it's in the title, but I am gonna try and turn my C11 into the guide scope for the Evo Lux. I think this is probably pretty stupid, but I'm a pretty stupid guy. Anyway, my name is Dylan O'Donnell. My hair is still growing long, so you owe me that case of beer soon, Craig. And you're watching Star Stuff. I don't think I've ever received a telescope that came in a Pelican case before. Uh, but maybe that's because the telescopes that I get are freaking massive. Nice. All right, it's got the nice green adenized steel. There we go, the Skywatcher Evo Lux 82 ED. I believe this has a focal length of, here we go, 530 millimeters. Okay, so this is the F6.4. Uh, it does reduce down to F5.8, which is a little better is the field flattener. I don't know why the field flattener isn't just part of the telescope, um, especially for such a wide scope. It's not like this is gonna be used for planetary or anything like that. You want a flat field for a photographic telescope, but it's a separate item. Now you can get all of this from Bintel in Australia. Bintel are my Australian partner. I do help Bintel a lot with their website and their marketing, and they have these in stock right now. There is another model. Uh, it is the it is the 62 ED. Uh, it's slightly cheaper at 699. This one's about 1.2, I think. It's on sale now. And that one is also f6.5, but it has a focal length of 360. So around that 400 FOV. I think the idea behind these telescopes is that they are diminutive. They're quite tiny. They've got a bit of heft to them, but they're not actually that heavy. So you could use this with a very modest setup. I'm not sure if this one is too heavy for the Star Adventurer, but the 62 ED, you probably get away with a, a regular Star Adventure track mount. You know, you don't need uh, an observatory grade mount to handle one of these things. Any of the lower end mounts uh, would do fine. Equatorial obviously preferred. Anyway, let's see if I can get this set up. What are you doing? get the Evo Lux on top here. So it's sort of piggyback the main scope. But when I say piggyback, I want this scope to do the guiding. May as well, we'll be off axis guiding <laughs> with the big boys, but that the scope, the Evo Lux is small enough and light enough. It should just go on the top here. I just gotta work out how to do that. And for that, I might need a guide rail across the top. Okay, the reason we just, oh, that's satisfying. The reason we just experienced some time dilation through a black hole there uh, was because I had to stop the video for a couple of days. My secret is Bintel. They basically help me out every time I don't know what I'm doing, which is a lot. So I got on the blower, again, explained my situation, 
and the guys down there sorted it out for me and sent me these two parts. The dovetail rail for the C11 and this Lozmandy adapter. Okay, look, I've got to be honest with you. This whole thing started as a bit of a meme. I thought it was going to be clever and do this video about how I'm taking this tiny little scope and putting it on my big scope, using that as the guide scope and that would make a funny thumbnail. Uh, but honestly, after using this telescope and setting it up this way, I've had to eat my words. I said I wasn't going to buy this telescope. I gave Skywatcher a call. I'm going to buy this telescope. I gave Bintel a call and I bought all of those accessories because I love this setup. I've got to say, I was using this on Twitch. I was using SharpCap to live stack the images. Uh, this is called electronic assisted astronomy. And it means instead of using an eyepiece, I can actually just zoom around in my observatory and broadcast live views of deep space objects in full color. So after thinking about it for a while, I was like, I could really use this. In fact, this becomes the coolest finder scope in the world and allows me to broadcast a wide color view of what I'm doing on the main scope when I am streaming on Twitch. Now the little Skywatcher 82 erectile dysfunction, ED, is not without its faults. It is a doublet, so the stars are kind of a little bit bloated and puffy if they are big bright stars like Alan Attack, but with a bit of careful processing and star reduction, that's not so much of a problem. And especially for such a small portable telescope. And that's really the main use case for this telescope. If you aren't going to splurge for a triplet refractor, this might be the next best thing. But really for me, the joy of this was actually being able to see the stars again. It's been so long and there were some clouds out, but I did what I could. I did this in 26 minutes. No flat frames, a tiny little crop in, but essentially this is the field of view. For a 26 minute image, I don't think it's bad. And for me, it was just lovely to get outside and do something again. So thanks Skywatcher for letting me use this scope and thanks Bintel for helping me through in this crazy configuration, but it's working great. Follow me on Twitch if you want to see me stream live views of space through this telescope. And if you want to buy one, I'll leave the links in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the new episode introduction today and I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. It's been a pleasure to get back in the saddle. Keep tagging me in those images of yours and I will be back as soon as I can with more space content. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, you've been watching Star Stuff and remember, everything- yeah. Midi! <laughs> Come on, no, Kimmy. Midi, repeat after me. Everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.